I'm Marie from Humble Bee and Me, and today's DIY is a simple but oh so lovely summer stone fruit lip balm. So the bulk of this lip balm is a blend of three different liquid carrier oils from three different summer stone fruits, plums, apricots, and cherries. That mixture is then thickened up into a nice balmy texture with some beeswax, and then I have included a bit of a mica for a complementary kind of color to the balm. I chose a kind of cherry colored mica, but there's plenty of room here to have fun with uh, kind of any color that you really like and in keeping with the theme, perhaps something that makes you think of summer stone fruits. Now this is not designed to be a tinted lip balm. It's just got a bit of color in the tube, but you'll see later on in the video that on the skin, it really doesn't impart any noticeable color, just kind of a hint of shimmer. If you are looking to turn this into a tinted lip balm, please make sure you are reading the full partner blog post that is always linked in the description box below. And in addition to information on transforming this into a tinted lip balm, you'll also find information on substitutions, scaling, shelf life, links to places to buy all of the ingredients and a whole lot more. But yeah, this is really easy to make. It's basically like a, a melt and then quickly add cool down phase, quickly stir and quickly pour, leave it to set up a uh, voila. Yeah, very, very simple. Uh, so yes, let's go make this lip balm. We'll begin by combining the ingredients for our heated phase in our melting vessel. So this is a quite small uh, 250 milliliter Pyrex measuring cup. As you can see, it's really old. All the writing is barely distinguishable. You can catch it under the right angle and you can see it. Um, but I really like this one because it's the smallest Pyrex that I have and it's a lot thicker glass than my beaker. So it has you know, more heat capacity. It stays warmer for longer, which makes the pouring process easier. So I like this. This is my little, my little lip balm Pyrex. But here are our ingredients. We're going to start with six grams of plum kernel oil, 3.3 grams apricot kernel oil, four grams cherry kernel oil, six grams unrefined beeswax. You could use refined if that's what you have, but I almost always prefer unrefined beeswax. And then 0 0.6 grams of a stone fruit inspired mica. So I chose this one thinking more of cherries, but you could go a little oranger, thinking of apricots or a little bit more plummy, thinking of plums. It's really up to you. This one is sangria from Yellow Bee and this was a gift. To melt everything together, we're going to use a water bath. So this is a small saucepan that has about two centimeters or two thirds of an inch of water in the bottom of it. And just pop that in there and go put this on the stove top over medium heat for about half an hour to melt everything through. Uh, how long this will take will depend a lot on how big your beeswax chunks are. I think this bad boy is gonna take a while to melt. So yeah, I will see you when this is all nice and liquidy. Once everything has melted, you can remove your water bath from the heat and we're going to pull our little measuring cup out of the water bath. I'm going to start by drying off the outside so we don't accidentally incorporate any water into the lip balm. And now I'm going to get set up to move quite quickly. So what we need to do is we need to weigh in 0.1 grams of vitamin E, stir it in and then pour the lip balm into tubes immediately. So I'm going to get our little tubes set up here. You can kind of bundle these together with a rubber band if you are so inclined. Uh, and yeah, this formulation just makes four tubes of lip balm, which is still a lot of lip balm. <laughs> Definitely more than enough to last you and a couple friends for a while. Um, so yeah, just keeping things tiny so I don't overwhelm you with lip balm. But if you do want to scale the formulation up, I have lots of information on how to do that linked in the blog post. And do this quite quickly. I've got that trivet on there to help protect the scale from the heat of the measuring cup. 0 0.1 grams, give it a stir. And this is where, you know, the heat capacity of the thicker glass measuring cup comes in very handy. It's keeping things liquid and giving us more working time. So 
looks pretty good. Pretty proud of myself. I didn't make too much of a mess. So now I'm just gonna leave that to sit there and harden up. I'm also going to kind of kickstart our cleanup. Take a bit of paper towel and we're gonna wipe down everything that has still warm lip balm on it. And this will just make your cleanup a thousand times easier. Cause yeah, getting like waxy, greasy, colorful messes off of things, that's the, I would say the worst type of mess that we clean up. So if you make sure to wipe your container down with some paper towel until it's basically clean, until it's just like a little bit greasy, but not covered in a bunch of wax, then that'll scrub up quite nicely with a bit of detergent. Once everything has set up, we are very close to being done. So you can see that <laughs> I definitely spilled a little bit here. So we will want to wipe these tubes down, but we're going to begin by capping them. I'm gonna take a swipe off one of these and sort of show you what it looks like uh, on the skin here. So you do get you know, like a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of color, um, but you kind of want spread around. It's pretty, pretty indistinct. And that's what I was going for. This isn't supposed to be a tinted lip balm. I wanted it to have a sort of on theme color, but it's not meant to actually tint the lips. If you want information on how to do that, make sure you're reading the blog post. So to wipe everything down, I've got a bottle of isopropyl alcohol and I'm just gonna mist it. And then we're going to wipe these down. I'm gonna start with the, uh, the cleaner <laughs> two and then move on to the dirtier two. And there we go. So we just made some beautiful stone fruit lip balm featuring three carrier oils from three beautiful stone fruits. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and turn on notifications and make sure you're reading the full partner blog post for this video. So that is linked in the description box below and there you'll find tons more information, information on substitutions, on scaling, on shelf life, links to places to buy all the ingredients and a whole lot more. But yeah, thank you so much and I will see you next time.